So I'm having a catch up with the Amazons. How are you guys? Uh, oh, blooming hell. Hot. 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 Yep, uh, perspirating. Very hot. But very, very happy to be here. I'm back doing shows after after a pandemic got in the way. What, what happened to you guys at that, at that time when the pandemic hit? Well, um, well, you know what? We were really fortunate to have finished uh, a US tour. Um, we got that wrapped up really uh, about a week or so before everything shut down. Yeah. Um, and then, I mean, it was such a long time. The, the, like, the lockdown and stuff, like, there were so many phases of that lockdown, wasn't there? So many like, chapters to the yeah. story. Um, but we pretty much wrote a record and we recorded it at the end of last year mm -hmm. and it's coming out in September. Yeah, tell, tell us about it and, and how does it sound compared to the, the music that you've, you've released before the pandemic? Uh, I think we like, to, we like to think that every album's different and we like to think that we evolve sonically and, and I guess in just as people and that is just, it's inev inevitably going to um, change the music that we make. The album's called How Will I Know If Heaven Will Find Me? Yep. Um, and lyrically, I think it's probably um, the most cohesive in terms of its themes. Um, over, the, over the pandemic, I was uh, kind of trying to navigate a long distance relationship. And as you can imagine, there's a lot of obstacles to that. Yeah. So um, a lot of the songs are really, really rooted in that and just exploring um, how you love someone when they're physically absent for long, long periods of time. Yeah. Good. And what was it like writing in such different circumstances compared to when you when you wrote before? Because you would have had to have done most of the writing, I'm sure, from from home. I think it took it took us a little while to kind of warm into it, but we've always we've always written for all of our albums. Matt will sort of come up with the like the skeleton of the song with like chords and a vocal melody, play it to us, and if we're vibing off it. It would have been in the studio, but in this case, like on our WhatsApp chat, uh, we dig into a little bit more. So we started doing uh, the same thing, but we would basically, once the restrictions had loosened up a little bit, we went to my flat in London and just did everything with program drums because we didn't have space <laughs> to do it. This is just for demos. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of those sounds ended up on the record. We, we did it with Jim Abyss. Uh, he was an amazing producer we wanted to work with for a long time, so that was an amazing experience. But um, he was so keen to just keep, if something sounded good, we just kept it. And, and a lot of the stuff that, uh, kind of weird sounds that we would uh, make in Chris's flat kind of ended up. And actually, to be fair, even something as straightforward as a, a vocal take for a song called One by One, um, we kept the whole vocal, uh, yeah. Yeah. It was sick. Oh, yeah. And when you step foot into uh, <coughs> into a studio, you've obviously got the demos kind of done and everything. You know what you're kind of going to do, but how does it go from that demo stage to a finished product? Well, I, I, what I love about recording and writing music is that um, the journey that the songs go on, like the amount of the, the, the hundreds and, uh, of micro decisions that you make along the way, um, all seem to, however small, they kind of accumulate and they create this final um, kind of version of the song, um, which I love. And that only, re the song's only really completed when you master it, which is right after a long yeah. <laughs> mixing process. But I think there's just so many, between the demo and even from like what we would call monitor mixes, which is the mix of song that you get after um, recording it in the studio. That's usually sent to the mixer as like a reference of what to do. Um, uh, even those micro decisions that we kind of make along the way um, of like guitar tones and uh, I don't know, the, the way the snare sounds. Do you want a fuller or you want something with that's brighter, that kind of stuff. It all adds to it and it, and it really is, you've just got to let go and um, you have to try and let go and just go with your instinct at that time. The challenge is when you don't have an opinion. Yeah, truly, yeah. If you're just there like, uh, uh, they both sound good. That's the most torturous part, rather than this doesn't sound, at least you know when something yeah. sounds good or not. So that's probably why uh, working with Jim was so good, because he really had that casting vote of like, let's do this. Yeah. And, and because we've loved his work for so long, um, 
we were 100% with him. So, um, you know, he had the power. He had the um, he had the power to do it. Respect. Yeah, damn respect. <laughs> good. Yeah, no, good. And uh, you've had the pleasure of being back out on the road, and uh, you went and supported Royal Blood on that tour. How was that? Uh, overwhelming. It was it was overwhelming, um, in an, in an amazing way, and also some and also sometimes it was just kind of like felt like an alien sometimes, like or like this kind of overstimulated zombie um, is probably more apt. Because, um, you know, we really, that was the first tour that we'd done outside of, after after everything happened. Yeah. And uh, and to play to 10 to 15, 20,000 people a night was just this fucking seat of the pants, yeah. baptism of fire um, experience. Even the, the, the last sort of tour we'd done before that would have been the American one that Matt mentioned earlier. And that was in like bars in... Or like you know, a hundred. We're lucky. Yeah. So it was very uh, a bit of a difference. Very daunting. It was a proper trial by fire to come from what kind of felt like um, we were still writing and stuff, but we were kind of living. We weren't living the lives of the, like being in a band that we have done yeah, for no. so long. And then suddenly it's just like bam, you're on yeah. stage, twenty thousand people. You're in a band now. <laughs> Do this. And you're trying to relearn your little tricks of the trade that you'd picked up to like stay healthy and like tour properly efficiently and you're like how did I do this again beers yeah, and pizza great. Chinese was, yeah we were so <laughs> exactly Indian. that doesn't <laughs> that doesn't last very long that's for sure you learn you definitely learn yeah. but honestly we were just so thankful to Mike and Ben for bringing us on that journey with us because they were waiting for ages you know they put out an amazing record and mm. they were waiting for so long to just tour the damn thing and uh, you know it was great yeah, for sure. And you've got your own headline tour coming up as well. Yeah, we've got a headline tour in October around the UK, um, playing all over. We're playing, uh, uh, we've got a date in Ireland as well, and we're heading to Europe, mainland Europe, and we're heading to the States as well. So, busy. I mean, the album's out in September, and then it's kind of goodbye, mum and dad, <laughs> goodbye, friends. <laughs> it's, see you in a year's time. See you time. in a year's time, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Now, when you were writing this for this record, you you must have written even more than what what's going on it. So, have you got? Are you going to use these tracks for the next release, or is this the point where you bin them off and you start again? Ooh, uh, I don't think we are going to bin anything off it. Well, I think we'll definitely do some editing and bin some stuff off. But um, this time round, we kind of um, just purely through uh, the amount of time that we had and the kind of way we were writing accumulated so many more songs than we traditionally or t- typically do in the Amazons. Um, usually we're like 12 songs written in the uh, rehearsal room and then we'll record that. But um, this was very different. It was, you know, 30, 35 songs. Um, a lot of different sounds going on there. Uh, but through, through having that many songs, we kind of saw like a theme in the right songs to kind of tell yeah. the story that we wanted to tell um, this time around. But that meant there's a lot of leftover songs that were like super cool, but didn't have a place on this record, and and loads of stuff that just wasn't finished in time. Uh, so we just didn't really stop writing, mm-hmm. which is different for us. <laughs> it's yeah. exciting. Yeah, absolutely. Well, guys, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Having a catch up. Yeah, love it. Thank you very much. Thanks for having Cheers. me.